Peace and blessings to all who are watching this video. This video is about two Americas. It is about an America for black women and an America for black men. In the 21st century, today is February the 13th, 2021, as I am before you, there was a bifurcated condition that exists with respect to the black population. 40 million people. At least 21 million of those people are black and female. And the rest consist of black males. And what I'm holding up before you right now is evidence of this bifurcation. That there is America that has targeted and incorporated over the past 60 years black American women. This America informed by corporations, informed by educational institutions, informed by banks, informed by the mainstream of American capitalism has over the course of decades done a successful job at targeting and selecting black women for integration. In contrast to black American women, you have the black male population. Black men and black boys whose lives as a demographic are fundamentally different in terms of educational outcomes, in terms of class mobility, in terms of criminal justice, in terms of life prospects. It's fundamentally, fundamentally different from that of black American women. This bottle that I'm showing you was produced by a company based in California. A company which has seized upon the commodification, the branding and the selling the overall incorporation of black women since the 1970s. There is no other demographic in the United States, no non-white demographic in the United States. Asians, Latinos, Jews, Italians, Irish, so on and so forth, where this type of bifurcation exists. We have a political condition, a condition where the African-American woman or 
the black female, black women and girls are a separate entity. They have their own identity. They have their own politics, which is severed, distinct, and removed from the lives of black men and boys. White America has benefited from this tremendously. And white America has been conscious about this selective incorporation over decades. As I talk to you, several months removed from the summer of 2020, a moment of protest inspired by the murder slash assassination of George Floyd. Where Black Lives Matter, the movement, a movement seized upon, inspired, hashtag by Black American women upon the deaths of black men. Signified the radical difference that exists. The two worlds. One America for black women and one America for black men. This is the product. This is the end result. This condition exists nowhere else on the planet where you have black populations. It does not exist on the continent of Africa, all 54 countries. It does not exist in the Caribbean, it does not exist in Central or South America. It only exists in the Western Hemisphere, particularly where black people are a minority and white people are a majority. This bifurcation is significant. The reason why it is significant is because it represents the unwillingness, the reluctance of mainstream white capitalist America to engage in a role Bust way the plight of the vast majority of black men in the United States. In academic circles, in the world of history, in the world of ideas, this represents what is called American exceptionalism that you have a population within the black population who adheres to and has conformed to the dominant ideals and values of a given white society. It reflects ideas of merit, of hard work, that you have a population within a population that somehow stands out above everything and everyone else, i.e. black men. This has created a psychology and a mentality within the black population with respect to black women that has created 
significant bricklage between black men and black women. So that black women represent this type of anointed class. They are different. They are better. They are superior. They are more advanced than black men. And in doing so, this reinforces American racism. It reinforces the idea that the white population in this country is fundamentally fair. It is fundamentally fair to black people. And that the only population within the black population that has risen to the meritocratic standards of white society are black women. And that the plight of the black male population in general, the condition of black males, black boys, black male youth, adult black men, is a condition that is fundamentally self-inflicted. That what black males, black boys, black male youth, and black adult men, what they endure and encounter has to do with their own self-destructive ways. And this commodity right here, Black Girl Magic, it reinforces this idea that somehow the only population that has risen to the occasion in the face of fundamental white fairness are black women. The political spear reflects this. The election, our most recent election, reflects this. The black women who are mayors of cities, the black women who sit as judges in cities, the black women who occupy high positions in academia, and the upper echelons of American society reinforce, reinforce this idea that black men are inept, incompetent, and inferior in relationship to the black female population. And that racism, classism, misandry, and overall American caste system cannot be seen as the factors or the variables that explain the condition and plight of black men. So we have two fundamentally different realities between these two populations. Black women on one hand and black men on the other. The lived experiences between these two groups are not the same. The economic, educational, political outcomes between these two groups are not the same. These two groups are not walking in the same direction. In the broad scheme of things, this dynamic represents a band-aid. It represents a shortcut to the lives, to the souls of black folk. I stand before you today as a black man who has witnessed and witnesses this bifurcation 
and who was disenchanted by it. And I am despondent by the lack of acknowledgement on the part of elites, black female elites, black male elites, and the white people who run the United States. This country will not experience true, robust, full-blown racial justice to the extent that it supports a two-tiered reality that reflects the lives, circumstances, and conditions of black men and black women.